Okay, take two. I got four minutes into it and my grandkids are in the next room playing video games and screaming and it was very distracting so I shut the door even though it's hot in my room. Okay, some people have mentioned that I ramble on too much or go too fast and go back and forth through scriptures. So they get confused. Um, they don't see the flow of what I'm talking about as far as like the timing of the rapture. First, let me clarify that the rap whether you believe it's pre-trib, before the seven-year tribulation, in the middle, during the second half, which is pre-wrath, or at the end, it is not a salvation issue. So it doesn't make me a false prophet or you an unbeliever or me an unbeliever just because we have one stance on what the Bible is showing us as far as the timing of the rapture. I believe we won't know the day or the hour because he doesn't clearly tell us dates okay but he does say that in, in his word and he, this is true that we will know the season okay by things that are happening in the world so with that said i'm not setting dates and i'm not saying um, when it started or if it started i believe we are in the birth pains i believe that if it hasn't already started it's the seven years, um, these first three and a half years, we are so very close. I mean, I believe it really has already started and I don't know when, um, and we really won't know. We will, we will know when we see the abomination of desolation, when the antichrist is revealed, which is the midpoint, because the word tells us throughout all the scripture, scriptures, so you can check Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, Revelation um, chapters 12 to 14 talk about the Antichrist and his reign, 42 months, which is three and a half years, which after he establishes himself here and sets himself up to be worshipped as God, that's when his reign begins, which this second half is called the Great Tribulation. So read about that in Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, Revelation chapters 10, uh, 12 through 14, and then also Daniel chapter 12. Okay, and then I encourage you to read 1 Corinthians 15, the whole chapter, um, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, the whole book. They're not very long. Um, I think it's, Second Peter chapter three. Anyway, and then um, yeah. So, with that said, um, this is a very basic timeline. Shows you it's it's outlined exactly how I have seen it in the Word of God. Um, no scriptures can be. Um, no scriptures that I have found in the Word of God contradict this timeline right here. So thank you, Mr. Alan Kirshner, for providing this basic chart so that I could fill in um, where I believe the seals and the trumpets and the bowls happen. So we, I do believe that the seals, the, se the seven seals, um, the seals begin, the um, beginning of sorrows, the birth pains here. So the beginning of sorrows that... Christ referred to in um, Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, I believe, are, the, that's the first three and a half years. It's the first 42 months, okay? The abomination of desolation, the Antichrist revealing himself, which they, he tells us in, I believe, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 or 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, um, that we we won't see Christ coming and the and our taking up to him, which is the rapture, until the Antichrist is revealed. Well, so that tells us right there that it won't occur until after this midpoint, because that's when the Antichrist is revealed. Okay. And again, I'll put the scripture references in the text box that um and I'll mark that down so I don't forget, so that you can go ahead and look those up, okay? 
I believe it's First Thessalonians 4. But I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the text box. I don't want to jump around and show you a bunch of scriptures right now, but I'm telling you. So we know that we aren't taken. And Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, Mark 13 tells us he, Jesus tells us himself, his disciples, his followers, us, that we will see the beginning of sorrows, okay? For, and then the scripture I said, I believe it's 1 Thessalonians 4 or 2 Thessalonians, tells us that we are not gathered to him, you know, until the Antichrist is revealed. So that pretty much tells us that we're going to be here for this first the first half of these seven years. Now, this is what I've shared in a different video, and I'll sum it up here. I, <clears throat> I haven't ran across this with anybody else, but I'm sure there's other theologians out there that believe this or have mentioned it, but this is what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me. This seven-year period, which Daniel chapter 12, and I believe chapter 10, refers to as the week of Daniel, it's a week. How many days are in the week? Seven. How many years are in the tribulation? Seven. But the second half is the great tribulation. Okay, so this week of Daniel is seven years. Each year is a day. The day of the Lord's wrath, the day of the Lord referred to in Isaiah 24, Jeremiah, throughout Isaiah, but Isaiah 24, I believe. Um, the day of the Lord is the last day, which is the last year. So I believe those bowls of wrath that happen at the end of the tribulation occur within that last year. Okay. And that is the day of the Lord, the seventh day, the, the last year of the seven years. We will, I believe, believers that haven't received the mark of the beast will be raptured before that last day. And it clearly tells us in the book of Revelation that the bowls of God's wrath are poured out in these final judgments on those that have received the mark of the beast. So, that is what the Lord has shown me, okay? And it concurs, it, it lines up with the whole word of God as far as scriptures and timelines and everything that God, Christ has told us when he was here and what he's shown us in the, and written in the word. So the first three and a half years right here are the beginning of birth pains, um, the beginning of sorrows, like a woman in childbirth, Okay, and what happens during those time, during that time, are wars and rumors of war, famines, disease, pestilences, earthquakes, in, increase in earthquakes, the severity of them. And finally, we see in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, death. A quarter of, earth, of the earth will die, not a quarter of one nation, but a quarter of the earth's population will die have died in this time frame in three and a half years by sword whether it's war or martyrdom okay hunger famine and death and pestilence and disease and beasts of the earth so if we take 7.5 billion people that are alive right now and we figure out divide by four a quarter of the Earth's population would be almost 2 billion people. 1.9, what's 1.875 or something like that. I rounded it to 1.9 billion people. So even though we've seen this pestilence in the last couple of years occur, and there'll be more, okay, um, as well as increase in diseases and even maybe uh side effects from what they give you to prevent the disease. <laughs> I won't mention more than that because it'll be flagged. Um, and we do know that famine, we, there's a global famine that's begun, okay? 
And we already know the tensions that are happening as far as wars around the world and civil unrest, especially from a few days ago, that's just gonna escalate civil unrest. Okay, anyway, when we see, when we see almost 2 billion, not just million, we're talking almost 2 billion people on the earth perish from these things, earthquakes. A thousand people just died in the Middle East from a, a large earthquake two days ago. A thousand people. Okay, but that's not millions and that's it's not hundreds of thousands, but combine all these things together. And when they cause almost 2 billion people to perish in this, you know, three and a half year time period, we will know, we will know by the word of God that we're in this time frame. Okay. So the midpoint, that's when the Antichrist reveals himself. Okay. And he steps into the temple, which will be built and finished by then and proclaim himself God and demand to be worshiped as such. This I believe is where the fifth seal of revelation occurs, the MOB. I don't like to say the full version of it because sometimes the, that phrase gets your video flagged. That's martyrdom. More people are gonna die from this as well. He didn't prevent his disciples whom he loved and lived with from dying from martyrdom, okay? So just keep that in mind. We're not, we're, we're, we're only special because of what he's done for us and the salvation he's offered us, not by, not because we're special, okay? So, and he does tell us in John um, 16, 33, I believe it is, that in this life you will have trials and tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Amen. And he will give us the power to overcome these things. And if not, unfortunately, since the beginning of time, we have seen faithful men of men and women of God perish, physically die. I mean, you know of friends and relatives, I'm sure, that love the Lord that have already went to the other side. So just because we're here right now, doesn't mean that he's going to keep us alive until the rapture. We very well could be in this 1.9 billion people. So, but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. So we will, our race will be over once we reach the other side. It's actually easier to get out of this and be there with the Lord already than to live through it, right? But he tells us that he will be with us and he will give us give us the strength and he will protect um, those that are of the church of Philadelphia, the faithful ones. As we see in Revelation 3, verse 10, he says, I will keep you from the hour of trial that comes upon the earth. Now, some pre-trib rapture believers say they use this out of context and they say, well, see, he's going to keep us from it. That doesn't mean he's going to take us out doesn't mean he's going to take us away from it doesn't mean we're going to be raptured he's going to cause the rapture to happen before anything happens that word keep if you look it up in the greek in the concordance that you probably have or the blue letter bible it's tereo t-e-r-e-o and it means to guard protect keep one in the same state watch over okay so he is going to protect, guard, and watch over the faithful, okay, that are in part of the church, the faithful believers through this time. And I believe he can do that, just like he protected the Hebrews during the plagues of Egypt. Amen. Okay, so then after this midpoint, that's when the, the Antichrist reign begins, which God gives him authority. Just like he gave the enemy authority over Job to cause everything to happen to him except death. Okay, he said you can't take his life. So um, this is the second half is the Antichrist reign, but he tells us in his word also that he will not let it. Um, 
he will cut this time, this last three and a half years short. He will cut it short for the elect's sake. He tells us that in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13. So why would he cut it short for the elect's sake if the elect are not here? And it's not just the 144,000 because they're divinely protected by the Lord. Nothing's going to befall or harm them because he will seal them and, and they will be his witnesses, right? So he's not cutting it short for them because they're already protected. He's cutting it short for the faithful that are living through this time. So he's going to intervene right here. He's going to cut it short. He's going to come back after this midpoint, but before the end. Okay, so this is where uh, Mr. Kirshner and I agree that he's going to he's going to rapture the church. He put Matthew 24, 36 here. Um, sometime in the second three and a half years before the last year. Okay, so sometime in this two and a half year time frame, he's going to, at the seventh trumpet, 1 Corinthians 15, says that the last trumpet, when it sounds, the dead in Christ will rise and those that are alive will, will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord. Okay, and then we come back with him for the battle of Armageddon sometime in this last year. Okay, so sometime after this fifth seal, the sixth seal opens up, and that, I believe, the sixth seal, because it's so many, it's a bunch of cosmic disturbances. Read Revelation chapter six. Um, it brings on all this cataclysmic stuff. Okay, and so if you read forward through the book of Revelation, you'll see the trumpets one through six. Um, the first trumpet, a third of the grass and trees are burned up. Um, the second trumpet, there's like a mountain burning on fire that falls into the ocean and a third of the sea life dies and a third of the ships are destroyed. Um, the third trumpet, to me, it could be an asteroid or it could be a comet. It causes the water to, be, to become bitter on the planet. Um, the fourth the fourth trumpet, a third of day and night are dark, darkened, probably because there's debris and um, or gas or ash in the in the atmosphere. Okay. The fifth trumpet, locusts from the bottomless pit, but they do not harm those that are the fault are Jesus's. They are only told to um, harm those that have received the mob from this guy. Okay. And then the sixth trumpet are plagues that befall those that have the MOB. And then the seventh trumpet, I believe, is the rapture. Read Revelation chapter 14. The rapture is there. Okay, and then you'll the the following chapters start to reveal the bold judgments begin. Okay. So after, whenever this time frame is, when we don't know the day or hour, when Jesus decides to pluck his church out um, at the seventh trumpet, then that begins the day of the Lord and the bowls of his wrath, God's wrath, which are the seven last plagues that are, and they all happen to those that have received the MOB. Okay, so soar on those with the MOB, all sea life dies, water to blood, all the fresh water, surface water, um, heat and fire scorch the earth from the sun. The fifth bowl is darkness and pain. Six is Armageddon, the battle of Armageddon. And then that's when Christ returns with us um, to put an end to the enemy and his minions. And then the seventh, which concludes the tribulation is the greatest earthquake that has ever been, and hail, 70 pound hail balls, okay? So, and that's it, okay? So, all of scripture, if you can find any verses that contradict this outline, then go ahead and post them in the comment sec section. 
I'll put some scriptures in the text box that um, confirm this time frame and the ones that I've already mentioned. And that pretty much sums it up. And um, if, if we're raptured before the midpoint, which the word doesn't tell us, um, but if we are, if I'm wrong, I'll just be in heaven sooner. So that's a blessing. But I hope for the best, prepare for the worst. I prepare as though I'm going to be going out right here, just like Joseph prepared for the seven years of famine and Noah, Noah was instructed to prepare for the destruction and told to build the ark to keep him, him and his family safe and to stock it up with food and then the animals. Um, and then God guided and protected him through it, just like he, Jesus told us in the New Testament, not to look at the storm or the things going on, but to rest and have faith in God that he has our life in his hands. And the only, you know, so if I'm right, some people won't be prepared. And that's where, you know, if I'm wrong, I'll just be in heaven sooner. If I'm right, um, there's going to be people that be people that aren't prepared. And unfortunately, that's the hard part because once these things start happening and they've been told by teachers um, since the early 1900s that we're out of here before anything happens, they're going to, some of them will lose faith in God and they will turn away. And um, we know there's going to be a great falling away. The word of God tells us that too, that there's a great apostasy. So once these things happen, some people are going to get upset with what they've been, they're going to feel like they've been lied to. And some of them are not going to be able to handle it. And they're just going to succumb to taking the MOV because they have nothing else. They, they don't have anything saved up to take care of their families. They don't have any means and they have to fully rely on the government. So that's where, um, you know, but we, we were warned over and over to overcome and persevere until Jesus comes and watch and wait and know that this and know the season we're in. So again, when we see this many people dying within a three, three and a half year window, then we, we will know without a doubt we're in this time period. God bless.